Hey guys, it's Dr. May. How are you today? Um, thanks for joining me. Uh, I have a new video on finding meaning in loss. And I'm going to pull this up for us here. All righty. So um, just give you a little background. So I was recently reading a book by um, David Kessler uh, called Finding Meaning. And he's somebody who worked with Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. And you might have heard that name before. She's somebody who did the first five stages of grief. So if you could see in the left of the screen, uh, those five phases are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. So it was really at the time more about stages you go through when you're dying or when a loved one is dying um, or after the death of the person rather. And then when she worked together with David Kessler, they, they said, well, we could use these stages, stages for grief and grieving. And then he kind of took over for her after she passed away and he's continuing work on death and dying and grief and grieving. And he came up with a sixth stage called Finding Meaning, and he wrote a book all about it. So I recently read the book, and I thought it was an excellent book. I definitely recommend it. And um, I think this is an important topic because loss is something that we all experience. It's a universal experience because everything in life um, begins and ends, including our life itself, um, our relationships, and all kinds of things. So we're navigating loss throughout our lifetime. And some could be much more challenging than others. And even, um, you know, in smaller losses, finding meaning is, is important to help us kind of get to some resolution. So today I'm going to go over this concept by providing some ways of finding meaning that he shares in the book. Uh, of course, his book has a lot more examples and anecdotes and things that I'm going to share today. So I certainly recommend that and or his, uh, his reference for grief.com, which is his website. So anyway, let's get to it. Um, so one of the things we could acknowledge is that, especially when we lose a loved one to death, uh, it's a very, it could be very painful. We could be in a dark place for a long time and we could feel hopeless about ever feeling better. We could really be stuck in our grief um, and it could be a big struggle for us. But it might get to a point where we're ready to stop hurting. The grief may never truly go away. But we also are starting to realize that life is still going on. Um, even I'm start, I'm still going on. My heart is still beating. My cells are still regenerating. Um, everything in me is still changing. So am I going to join life? And if I decide I want to, that's a choice I can make. And part of that choice is to like decide that I'm going to move forward even with the memory of my loved one, that I'm going to find a new way to take the loss with me on my journey forward to find a new way of living that incorporates and integrates that loss. And when I start to find meaning about the loss, it helps me to keep the connection with my loved one or the person or the thing that I lost or even pet and remain connected in love rather than just connected in pain. And to incorporate you know, the grief into my life plus other more meaningful things that are perhaps even related to it. So here's just some basic information about finding meaning. So it's important that we go through the first five phases of grief before we search for meaning. Because if we're in a very dysregulated state, it's going to be hard to find, uh, you know, really resilient style meaning. It, it's going to be more of a dark, emotionally mind, emotional mind type of meaning. And it's going to be more negative, more pessimistic, um, and not as healthy for us. So when we have a little bit more resolution, when we kind of gain some acceptance of the loss, we feel a little bit more calm and more ventral vagal energy, so to speak, more window of tolerance, more wise mind. That's a good time to start, you know, finding some meaning in the pain. And meaning is something that is individual to us. So we each have our own things that we're going to find to make meaning of the loss. So let's say there's a loss in a family and a parent dies and there's a few different children and a, and a spouse each person might make meaning of it in a different way. There might be some shared meaning through discussion and you know, collaboration, but each person might have their own way of finding meaning that is helpful for them. So meaning is built on all of who we are. It, we could incorporate what we, our cultural background, our family, our religion, our temperament, and, and our life experience all kind of comes together to help us find meaning in the loss. And it's not something that's 
you know, uh, there, just there, it's something I actively work on achieving. And another thing, um, just as a fact, is we never, we may never uh, fully understand why the person passed away or why the loss happened. There might be some mysteries there. Uh, why did this person die young? Why did, you know, uh, we, we go into an accident, we have an accident and they died and I lived. We may never truly get answers to some of these puzzling questions, but we don't have to fully understand why to make meaning of the event and to find a way for us to move forward. And even when we do find meaning, it's not to diminish the loss. The loss could still be significant and we, it always might be there for us. It always might be part of our experience in a daily way. Um, but, you know, and, and we know, and we might find that it's, it still isn't worth the loss. Even if I find meaning and do positive things as a result of it, I still might say, you know what, but I still wish the loss never happened. I'm st I still, I'm not happy that it happened. So we're not trying to diminish the pain, but we will diminish the suffering. So I could this, you know, sustain my love and have a little less suffering and change the way the loss is experienced in my life. So there are definitely those some obstacles to finding meaning and to healing. So we might find, so just to validate ourselves that this could be a struggle, that focusing on the past in some ways is more easy and comfortable than deciding to join the living and to join the world without our loved one. It, it's a big step. It could be a painful step. So we might choose to stay on the safe side and live in the past in a certain kind of a way and not move forward. And in some sense, we might feel that moving forward is being disloyal to our loved one. So since they're not going on living, why should I go on living? I feel guilty doing that because they can't. Or, you know, if I lost a spouse, I feel guilty dating someone else. It almost feels like cheating on my spouse. Or if I had a child loss, having another child might feel like um, dishonoring the child who died. So those things could be very challenging, even selling a, a family home that was in the family for a very long time because it's not practical to keep it might feel like, you know, I'm dishonoring my loved one. So working through all those things might be part of this process. Other times um, deciding to live again makes the goodbye more final and we don't want the finality of a goodbye. It's hard. It's hard to accept, truly accept on different levels that the person is no longer physically present in our life. And another obstacle is that we haven't fully gone through the five stages of grief. And, you know, those stages we might have to revisit several times and go around the circle a few different times. So if we haven't truly worked some of those things through, you know, we may not be fully ready to create meaning. So that could be something we could look at as well. Okay, so I want to share several examples of making meaning that was um, described in the book of finding meaning. And these might give us some ideas about how to do it ourselves. And of course, these are just general categories. Um, there's other ways as well. I'm not going to cover the full extent of everything, but it might give you some ideas that could help you perhaps to move forward if you're struggling with this yourself. Okay, so the first one is that after we lose somebody, it might bring to the forefront how short and precious and fragile life could really be. And a lot of times we forget about that. We take life for granted. Um, you know, we just kind of go through day to day. But when we, it's really put in our face that it could be taken away at any time and we could lose our life or lose other relationships, we realize how precious, re precious it really is. We might see beauty in life that we've been overlooking. And when we realize that we have just a short period of time, really, it might motivate us to get our values back in alignment and say, well, what's really important to me? How do I really want to spend the rest of my life? Who do I want in my life? Am I doing things that are really going to make me happy at the end of the day? So putting that back into perspective could be something that we take away from the loss. Another thing is we might find some meaning into what, you know, why the loved one lived. So we might think, well, you know, even if they were there for a short period of time or a very long period of time, well, what did our loved one get out of being here on earth during the time that they were here? And what kind of unique qualities that they had, did they have that they, you know, they got to share with others that we all got to experience. 
And what kind of impact did they have on others? Maybe there was a pos very positive impact. Maybe there were very helpful, kind people that they were loving. And, you know, we got a lot of those things. And even if it was kind of a mixed bag and, you know, there was some trauma involved there, or maybe they were a difficult person, there might still have been some lessons we learned even from those kinds of behaviors. Or maybe there's things we learned from knowing them about how we don't want to live our life. So maybe there's something they were meant to share with us in a certain kind of a way that enriched who we are. So we could kind of think about that and that could be part of the meeting. And related to that, we could just be grateful for the relationship that we had, just for having known them. Uh, you know, a lot of people are put into our path in life, some for a very short period of time, some for a much longer period of time. So we could remember, you know, I'm grateful for the time I did have with this person, even if it was limited. And just because it's limited, it doesn't mean it wasn't meaningful. So we could appreciate whatever gifts they had to offer us in terms of, you know, not just physical gifts, but like emotional gifts, spiritual gifts, uh, just the gift of who they were. We can acknowledge positive ways they may have changed us and, you know, think about what we got out of knowing them and what good might have come from the relationship. And I know sometimes that's a bit of a stretch, but sometimes if we really think about it, each person it could enrich us in a certain kind of a way. And sometimes it's meaningful just to have the memories or just to revisit memories. And sometimes even to do that with others that knew the person as well. This is part of what we could do right after they pass away, like at a wake or a funeral. But it's also an ongoing thing that we could, you know, bring into our life as years go by. And sometimes, you know, we struggle with that because we might get stuck on some of the painful things. So if the person, let's say, had... Uh, a tragic ending, or they had uh, a serious illness at the end and they struggled and suffered. That might be the thing that's in the forefront of our mind. And it might be hard to shake that. But rebalancing that by thinking of other things before that time, the, the bigger you know, whole of their life could put things in perspective for us. Remembering the good times, remembering times throughout the years, uh, even ordinary times might be meaningful. Sometimes even writing the memories down, creating kind of a memory book or looking over and organizing old photographs, kind of keeping maybe some of the things that they had that are meaningful to us. Sometimes, you know, if the person passed away, they, this may have a tremendous amount of stuff. They may have been living alone in a big house and you certainly can't keep everything. But maybe there's a certain few things that are important to you that you still could keep and use that are meaningful to you. Other times you might be able to photograph some things that you can't keep and just at least have that and you'd be able to look at it when you want. And that could be important and meaningful. And another thing to remember is that even when you're, they're not physically in your life, the relationship continues after the loss. So you still have a kind of psychic relationship with this person. You relate to the memory of the person. You relate to you know, your vision of the person. And you, you, there's still something that, that happens in a relationship kind of a way, even when they're not physically here. So death ends a life, but it doesn't end a relationship and it doesn't end the love we have for that person. And we could continue to evolve the relationship and learning from that person even after they're gone. So you might be able to go back to things that they said to you or things that you did together or just ways that they interacted with the world and continue to reflect back at them at different times of your life and learn different things as you're in different spots in your life. So if you lost someone when you were a teenager and now it's 10, 20, 30 years later, looking back, you might have a different perspective on who that person was and, the, and new, get new meaning out of some advice maybe that they gave you or just some ways of interacting with others that you now see in a new light. So that's actually something that can be meaningful and possible. Just continuing to have that learning in your mind, have that relationship in your mind, and kind of like embodying some of their good qualities as well. So allowing them to live on through you. So if they taught you kindness and taught you to, to work with children, let's say, and you continue to do that, and you continue to be kind to children, let's say in your family, or if you're a teacher or a babysitter, you're letting some of them live on through you. And so that could be 
nice to remember as well. Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot one point. Um, and if you believe in the afterlife, it might be meaningful to think that there's an afterlife where they're watching over you. And maybe there's even some kind of a spiritual connection there. But again, you know, that's based on you and your individual beliefs. Okay, and other times we could commemorate our loved ones in certain ways that are special to us. So it could be as simple as keeping up a tradition that they like to do, visiting places that they like to visit. Maybe there's a favorite vacation spot that was a family vacation spot and you continue to take your family there. Or maybe at holiday time, you like to go to New York City and see the tree in Rockefeller Center, being a New Yorker, that's something we do here. Um, and maybe every year now you still do that and that's something you still like. Or there's a restaurant you still visit and, and have dinner at and you remember your loved one while, you were, while you're there and enjoy a meal perhaps with new people. So there's a blending of the old and the new. Other times it might be that you're carrying forward a cause that your loved one believed in. So maybe they were into helping veterans or teaching kids to read or doing community cleanups or helping pets. And you said, you know what, in honor of my loved one, I'm gonna continue to do that. Or I'm gonna continue to help raise money for this cause that was special to them. And that makes me feel good. Other times you might contribute in ways that honor the person, but maybe they weren't involved in the cause, but the, the, it's like helping others to prevent maybe a tragedy that your loved one had. So let's say you lost a loved one to suicide. Maybe as a survivor of a loss of suicide, you'll be more involved in suicide prevention. And that feels meaningful to you. If I could save a life, even if I couldn't save my loved one, if I could save somebody else, that would mean a lot. Or if your loved one died of cancer and maybe you're helping to raise money for cancer research, I could help other people to live and have a better life or a longer life, even if my loved one couldn't be saved. So carrying on things like that might be important. And, and through the process of doing these things, it might give you a whole new purpose in life that you never thought of before. And another thing is kind of with that whole survivor guilt sort of a thing is we may never really know why they died and I lived. But since I am still here, I might start to think, well, I still have life left. If their life was precious, maybe my life is precious too. And maybe there's something meaningful, important I should do with whatever time that I have left. And so how should I spend my time? Why am I here? What's the purpose for me continuing forward? So finding meaning in why I lived and making the best of my time could also be something important. And I know I kind of rehashed that a little bit before, but it's probably worth just highlighting that even more. Another thing that it might come from the loss is just appreciating the loved ones that still are alive and still are in our life. So realizing that a person could die or could move away or something, you know, a loss could happen at any moment, um, we could appreciate the time that we do have left. So making sure we keep those relationships strong, don't miss opportunities to tell people how much we love and care about them, because if you forget, it might be too late. Sometimes that's an, that's something that people always say after a loss, like, oh, I wish I got to say I love you one more time or, you know, things like that. And sometimes after a loss, like a strange relationship start, people start reconnecting even after estrangement. You could be surprised about who sticks around or who comes back around or who fades away. And it might help you form or repair relationships that were in trouble before. And while you're not glad that you lost the person that, that passed away, you might be glad about those, those new reconnections that are happening. Other times you might end up meeting new people in the process of grieving. So perhaps you join a bereavement group and you're surprised at, wow, like I, I really am making some new friends here. I'm connecting with people I never would have met otherwise. And I'm having these opportunities to give and receive love and support that mean a lot. The care I'm getting from people and the people who are asking about me and the people who are listening to me, you know, are very important to me now. And now, and maybe when you're a little further along in your grief, having opportunities to empathize and help others can mean a lot to you too. So maybe you can even share something from what you learned through the grieving process. And finally, just in general, 
you might discover certain inner strengths that you didn't know you had. Just being able to get through this process and trying to find new ways to be resilient and survive could show you something new about yourself that could make you proud in a certain kind of a way. So just in summary, um, some benefits of finding meaning is that it could help us make sense of our grief. Uh, it could allow us to experience more than pain and remain connected to our loved ones through love and not just through pain. Finding meaning helps us to move forward and be less stuck in the first five phases of grief. But of course, we want to try to go through those as much as we can first. But the, the meaning part does help us move forward in ways that are you know, less likely to be trapped. Okay. Um, allows us to transform grief into something else rich and fulfilling. So you might end up doing and connecting in new ways and empowers us to have a path forward. All right. So I believe that's it. So I'm going to stop the share, I think. There we go. Sorry, I couldn't find the button for a while. So I hope this gave you some ideas and maybe perhaps is a little helpful. So thank you for listening. And I will be back soon with some more stuff. All right. Thanks, everybody.